County Board of Supervisors Economic Development Committee meeting Tuesday, November 17, 2023, uh, p.m. Call the order and roll call. Um, Mr. Dudley? He, we have to call him again. He called. Oh. He's just hit me down, right? specific legal matter requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel. Um, we only have one item, legal authority, Virginia Code section 2.2-311A8, subject matter, projects Unison, Harlow, Kiosera, and 4TT, purpose, legal co consultation slash review of local performance agreements. After it was moved to second bid, the voted on will go to across the hall, please. I'm second it, Mr. Dunham. Yes, sir, I second that. All in favor? Right. Roll call. Let, let, let her go roll. All right, Mr. Dudley? Mr. Yes. Mr. Scare? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. We'll move across the hall to the session. Hey, Tim, um, I'm going to hang up on you. We're going to call you for closed session on this beer front in there, okay? Sounds yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Certify closed session. Be resolved that Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors Economic Development Committee meeting on November 17, 2020. The committee hereby certifies by report to vote that the best of each committee member acknowledge only public business matters. Lawfully well, exempt from the open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and identify the motion authorized closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered closed meeting. If any committee member believes there was a departure from the requirements of the act, he, showed, he shall so state. Prior to the vote, indicate the substance of the departure. The statement shall be recorded in committee's minutes. Mr. Scares? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Dudley? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're down to new business, item 5A, announced economic development projects, updates. I think Susan's going to take care of it. Susan's going to come up. We thought it was important. We've had several, uh, several announced projects in the last few months and wanted to give a report not only to the committee, but also to the general public. Uh, about where these projects stand, and Susan's passing out a really 
uh, quick and dirty uh, synopsis of each of these projects. There's four projects on the list. Uh, two I know are of high importance to the community, Era Farms and Stanton River Plastics. Uh, in addition, we're providing an update on Panasutics uh, and micro blenders. Have at it. Ms. McCullough. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, of the committee. Um, we wanted to talk about some projects. Uh, Aero Farms, economic development staff is in constant contact with Aero Farms, and the company is committed to the project as well as the site. They have full site control of Lot 3 and the Cane Creek Center, and they're moving forward despite several months of delay due to the COVID-19 impact. They have rebid their construction of the building, to an assortment of building firms and costs were greatly reduced and a revision responses. Aero Farms expects to close in financing by the end of quarter one, 2021, with a groundbreaking shortly thereafter. Pennsylvania County, Red Cross, Northern State have provided funds to Aero Farms since this is a performance-based project. Regarding microblenders, they purchased the former tech building in Gretna and they did refuse in title grants such as the Enterprise Network Senate. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they have delayed the Gretna project for three to four years, and they're making investments in their Pennsylvania facility. In the meantime, the company is leasing out space in their building to other um, tenants. No grant funds have been provided, nor are they earmarked for microblenders. Regarding Panda Foods, the Pennsylvania County IDA owns the facility in which they are leasing. Also, the IDA paid about $395,000 toward Panasutics manufacturing equipment to lease it back to the company. Panasutics is on schedule with the facility and the machinery lease name. There are 17 employees in Ringgold and the company is actively hiring. Panasutics is entered into a partnership with pharmaceutical giant DSM. The company has also installed its first line of equipment. They're accepting orders and they're in the process of planning a ribbon cutting. And again, no grant funds have been provided since this is a performance-based project. Uh, lastly, Stanton River, Stanton River Plastics, is they, they and their developer are in the final process with the construction document. All the due diligence and survey work have been completed on the site since permits have been applied for with the state. A symbolic groundbreaking is planned for December and full site construction is expected to commence in first quarter 2021 after the state permits are received. Again, the grant funds have been released by the county or SR RIPA because of the performance based project. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. We're down to five days back with Mission Grant Loan Updates. You want to take that, Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. I'm going to do my best. Um, you, know, you guys know that we depend significantly on the Tobacco Commission for the success of our economic development program. And it's been a, a good relationship for many, many years, um, probably since the Tobacco Commission was formed. Uh, because of them, we have three very viable industrial parks, including the mega site. Uh, and we have been the great, the happy recipients of the, the largest allocation of Tobacco Commission monies due to our traditional reliance on the tobacco industry. However, the rules and regs and stances of the Tobacco Commission have changed greatly over the years, uh, from a 90-10 program to a 50-50 program, and now most recently, it's becoming more of a, it feels like more of a loan fund. In fact, our allocation is no longer our allocation going forward. There will no longer be monies deposited in our coffers for our exclusive use. So our competitive advantage in economic development by virtue of the Tobacco Commission has waned tremendously. Uh, and it causes us a lot of concern. Uh, 
some of that concern has come up by virtue of three uh, grants that, and loans that we're working with the Tobacco Commission on. One we're going to defer and speak about again in closed session in the next, uh, in the work session with Board of Supervisors. Um, so I'll, I'll let that one be for now. Uh, the first one I'll update you on is our shell building loan. You are aware of our relationship with Realty Link and our shell building that is presently being constructed right now in Regal, the first lot of you know, the King Creek Industrial Park. Um, we fronted uh, $1.1 million out of our money to initiate that project with the understanding and promise by the Tobacco Commission that we would get refunded. I believe the first time on Kim was three weeks, take about three weeks, so that's three months ago. And we are now in the process of borrowing money from the Tobacco Commission, of which they are making us go through the Virginia Resources Authority, which is making us hire a bond council and provide a moral obligation and jump through a tremendous number of hoops in order to get this money. Um, so right now, Kim's pocket is $1.15 million lighter uh, because we are unable to to close this loan with BRA because of the significant number of steps. They're treating this borrowing just like they would a $100 million school bond. Uh, and it is a tremendous concern to us. And we have expressed that concern with our uh, with the leadership of the Tobacco Commission, um, but have, as of yesterday, received reaffirmation that they would require us to hire bond council, which is going to be about $20,000 out of our pocket. Um, so all of a sudden, our loan from our application is costing us um, some administrative costs that we think are excessive. And it's a great frustration uh, that we wanted to, to share with you. Um, another grant that we're working with is the repurposing of a Project Lignum grant, which was, uh, I think, on the table probably before any of us at this table now were involved with the county except me. Um, Lignum was a project that went by the wayside. We had a $2.6 million grant to grade a site for Project Lignum. Project Lignum, or the pay grad, grading of PAD, is still of interest to us. Uh, we're, we're having considerable frustration getting an extension to that grant to use our application and to proactively grade our industrial park, uh, two additional lots at the industrial park for future development. I do have good news as of today. Uh, we did receive a um, favorable recommendation by staff after numerous meetings where it didn't seem like that was going to come forward. Um, to allow us to extend this grant and repurpose this grant for lots one and two. What I want to bring to your attention is the required match, which is $2.6 million. $2.6 million out of Pennsylvania County's allocation must be matched with $2.6 million of local money. The city of Danville is going to come up with $1.3 million, but we have to come up with $1.3 million. This is a RIFA initiative, Danville, Pennsylvania RIFA. And the reason I'm bringing it before you today is because you need to be aware that we don't have this money budgeted. Uh, we do have an economic development fund that we're pouring money into, that we're building uh, a sustainable fund, but we will have to appropriate money in the FY22 budget <coughs> to uh, make good on this deal of coming up with $1.3 million to match the city's $1.3 Tonight, it is, this is provided as information, but if you want to go a different direction or have comments or questions about this, before this horse gets all the way out of the barn, this is our opportunity to discuss it, slow it down, or stop it. Um, uh, it is, listen, we are so concerned that our, let's say five million bucks, on account with the Tobacco Commission that's going to be pulled away from us. We feel like in order to get the benefit of what's been set aside for us traditionally, we need to use it now. Uh, but that doesn't mean it will not cause strain on us locally to access that money. So we're talking about $1.3 million of county money to leverage a $5.3 million grading project for Barry Hill Metropolitan. 
and then the final grant I want to talk about, we'll talk about uh, in closed session uh, during our regular meeting. But this time I can answer any questions you have about the shell building loan, the repurposing of the Wigham grant, or any other tobacco commission related questions.
work jointly with the state. That's what I would say. And, and like an Indian reminder would be we have the number one um, site we need to work with the state, need to work with us. It's, it's a win win. It could be. Okay. Four hundred. You agree, Mr. Governor? You said, I think? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. How much you want for it? Yeah. I have my hand up.
know, we don't have to take this to the private market. But yet they're running us through the gauntlet as if it is a private issuance. Are y'all comfortable sending two loads, gentlemen? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have a more side so yeah. far. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Want to move on? Yes. We, gosh, I bet it's been a year ago, it seems like it, um, began a conversation with the city of Danville and, and actually had fully uh, realized the effect of letting go of Pennsylvania County's ownership, of PCSA's ownership and construction of utilities at Berryhill Mega Park and turned that over to Danville Utilities. Danville Utilities has already assumed that role and is spending a lot of money. Uh, we, they just approved a multi-million dollar contract to construct infrastructure at Berry Hill last month, or maybe it was earlier this month. Um, but we had gotten to the place, and I think the board had already authorized me to sign it. But it's been so long, I wanted to bring it back, that we have a memorandum of understanding between the county, the city, and RIPA as to who's responsible for what and how Pennsylvania County gets paid back uh, for the money it has spent over the years on water and sewer infrastructure at Berry Hill. And uh, the city has had this document for uh, eight or nine months probably. They finally let go of it last month and have asked us to hasten uh, execution. Um, <coughs> I've been over it. It has not materially changed from where we were uh, previously. Uh, it outlines how the county would be paid back. Uh, and we're just seeking the Economic Development Committee's recommendation that we execute the Berry Hill MO, Utilities MOU with the City of Danville and River. Well, uh, I will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Any questions from committee members? Any questions from board members? Okay, roll call. Mr. Dudley? Mr. Dudley. Mr. Hunt certainly will still be involved as the IDA's attorney 
However, we do want to move staffing back into our economic development program, our shop, with Susan and Matt, um, and, and figure out how we best support the IDA going forward. Um, so that's just for awareness sake, and I'll answer any questions you have or take any comments you may have. Any questions for board? Only one question. Thank you. The only question I would have is whether or not our request is that maybe you, you bring back some information on what that relationship has looked like on other localities that have done it with economic development, staffing, and committees uh, and more involved in the idea. I think it's a good idea. I just would like to see more information. Absolutely. Anybody else? Anything? Okay. Thank you, so much. All right. Nice to Bring it home. Uh, this is just a very br brief update. The alliance has been formalized. Uh, we've been in. I've been in talks with uh, Clark is still at DRF. Um, so scheduling our first kickoff meeting of the leadership group. The Daniel City Council approved that alliance, and I'm looking forward to it finally meeting and getting off the ground. And, once that gets started, I will provide a thorough update on uh, where it is and what it is due. Uh, but just as a reminder, that alliance consists of myself, Mr. Larkin, Mr. Castile, Mark Janak, uh, Alexis Earhart of the Chamber, and two industry representatives, one from Pennsylvania County and one from the city of Any questions about the alliance? Down the matters from committee members. Mr. Dunley, do you have anything, sir? Mr. Sketch. Anything from any other board members? Mr. Davis. I have nothing. All right. I'll declare the uh, economic development committee meeting adjourned.